Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today, joined once again by Josh from Two Geeks, One Mic. Two Geeks, One Mic, that's right. <laughs> and we are jumping into episode five of Shogun <sighs> Broken to the Fist. And I, I mean, right off the bat, Josh, where would you like to where would you like to begin? There there are two points that I would like to start with. Uh, Please. the first one being the smaller one, uh, which is once again the show proves they are not afraid of the, the gore. They are not afraid of it. They go there, like, they went they, there. They, they just did. Like they had uh the opening scene was the cleanup. After killing Josen and his <laughs> retinue, I loved I how it was just say. like half bodies being like dragged. Right? <laughs> like sides of beef. Dudes are just carrying, like, da, 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 funk. Just yep. right down in the trailer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The dudes, and, and the other thing is, like, the dudes that are helping clean up are like, oh, this is such a, so annoying. I can't believe we have to clean this up. It it was, I mean, on one hand, like, it's absurd, right? Because you've got that going on. And that, like, they're doing, like, taking out the trash. And then Toranaga shows up with a legit army. What? Yes! And... I, I love the, the audio. Right? It's like this rolling thunder. That's a sound Whoa. effect that you love to hear, though. Like, a lot of the times, I don't know, like they can get it wrong where everything feels or sounds all clippity cloppity, you mm -hmm. know, like this was like that low rumble where it's like striking fear into the viewer. And it, it came in subtly, too. It wasn't like, hey, all of a sudden there's a, a thunder crash somewhere. No, it was like if you go back and watch it, like it comes in real subtly, like throughout the whole scene. And it, yeah. it's already there when the guys are like, hey, what is that? I hear a noise. It, it was something. And I like, too, how all so you've got all of this like a visual stuff going on. And then we cut almost immediately to like the politicking between Toranaga and his <sighs> son. And Which, how how is my prediction the exact inverse of what happened in the show <laughs> but but okay but hear me out i think you did i think you might have touched on the fact that tornaga most likely had planned for some type of eventuality yes which he did he showed up with a legit army so like i mean that kind of says it all like he was expecting to go to war anyways and like he's upset with his son for being so obvious with his maneuvering, but I, go ahead. Sorry, finish up. No, no, no. He was he was just being upset because his son is so obvious. Like his son isn't like a shadowy player, but right. the result I don't think could have really gone any other way. Yeah. I mean, war was coming, so I think I think what Toranaga was most upset about. This is this is at least this is the vibe that I picked up on mm -hmm. is that he almost instantly, almost immediately picked up on the fact that, hey, my son was manipulated. Yes. Right. Yes. And he was upset about that. Not he was not upset that Josen was killed. He was not upset that the war was begun, that this was the first step. He wasn't upset about any of that. He was upset that his son was so easily manipulated. And damn. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, like as a viewer, I think I'm, you know, obviously rooting for Toranaga. Like that's, that's just sure. how it is. That's how things are presented. Like they want you to feel sympathy and have an attachment to this character, but he's not like, he's not dad of the year. You know what I mean? <laughs> like he's, he's chastising yeah. his son because I think of the reflection of that, what that has to do on him yeah. where he's a political mastermind and he's just so disappointed or it's like, you know, the son of mine, have you not learned anything from me? 
you should be better than this. And yeah. right. Uh, he, and I, I love the, the metaphor, the lesson where he's saying that men are like hawks and some of them will go out there and they seek the thrill of the hunt. And some of them are lazy and will just go for the lure and you've got to be better. And if you right. don't understand this, and I love, I love that even during this lesson, we was talking about this metaphor. He's even talking about how he's keeping Yobashige under his thumb. Yes. Like, he's like, no, I know what Yobashige wants. So I'm able to play that to my advantage. You don't understand how this is working and right. you're letting me down. Yeah. There's also two. So something curious that happens in this segment where he promotes Omi to <laughs> kind of like weaken Yabushiga. Oh, and yes. I have to wonder if he's not now playing them against one another yes. in the hopes where it's like, well, you know, maybe one of these guys will take the other one out and it's one less you know, piece to the chessboard that I have to worry about, or it's more like if they're distracted over here, they're not going to be looking over there. I I think that's, I, I love where you're going with that. And I love, regardless of what uh, Toranaga's motivations are, I think it's safe to say that Toranaga has everything under control, man. Everybody's playing checkers and he's playing 4D chess. Like the only thing he doesn't have control of is <laughs> the earth, like oh. the earthquake. But we'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. God. Oh no. <laughs> um but but like he's got you know everything well in hand. And towards the end of this lesson, the hawk brings back a pheasant and this pheasant this, this guy, damn pheasant. This damn pheasant. I I don't I never want to see one ever oh. again. That too much trauma for me. It is. It is traumatizing. <laughs> now I, I meant to look up and see uh what kind of what like what uh Blackthorn was doing. So well mm -hmm. explain in the episode first, um, which I know everybody saw it, but you know, just so everybody's clear on what we're discussing. <laughs> um well if you haven't seen it, you should track back and and watch it because it's great um during this lesson where uh toranaga is chastising his son for basically for being manipulated right. um the hawk brings back a pheasant and toranaga says give this pheasant to blackthorn as a token of my appreciation uh yeah. you know and it's like a huge honor it's really cool and uh, Mariko brings the pheasant and Blackthorn immediately sees it as a gift, gets extremely excited and is like, I'm going to make you the best pheasant you've ever had in your life. Spoiler ever. alert. It was not the best pheasant that anyone it was has not. had. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love how Tornaga's pheasant is like the oh. equivalent of today's society where it's like your boss thinks you did a really good job. So he, you know, like brings you the most expensive steak possible yeah like, and then you order it well done oh no don't oh, do no. that with ketchup don't do that. <laughs> with, with ketchup <laughs> but one thing that we do need to talk about is buntaro is alive and he will be staying Ooh. with with blackthorn and mariko and a lovely happy little household which <sighs> Obviously, that's not going to cause any problems, but I I don't know if we want to skip there now, but do you care if we talk about the council in Osaka? Does it cut to yeah. that part next? Yeah. So, well, yeah, because I think the, the army shows up and they all go, oh, my God, it's Buntaro. He's alive. Yay. Mm -hmm. And then I think it does switch over to the I, I watched it last night. So, you know, obviously obviously seriously seriously fresh um <laughs> and i think that's when it does skip up to the to the council bitch oh my god this i'm i am like chomping at the bit for this i am so excited to see what happens because okay the council in osaka obviously still divided 
And they're looking at like who's going to be the Toranaga replacement. And they're like, this guy over here, that guy over there. But Lady Ochiba returns and she's like, hey, like, I think I'm in control and I want you guys to kind of do what I say. And she's the mother of the heir. So, like, she does have some political weight to her. But she's the one that I think I'm most excited for going forward to kind of understand the motivations and see, like, what type of a player in the game yeah. she is. I, I extremely love this side of the story because in order for Ishido and his cronies to have legitimacy – they must follow the edict or mandate of Lord Tycho, mm -hmm. uh, the late Lord Tycho. And on that particular order, one of the things was is that for any official business to happen, a vote of five regents must be given. Well, Toranaga resigned. So now there's only four regents. Mm -hmm. So they have to find a replacement in order to get anything done if they want to have that claim to legitimacy that they once had. And now if they just decide to ditch the mandate and just start doing whatever they want, now Toranaga looks like he resigned because of corruption. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely. Br and there's that whole sequence where they're like, well, what about this guy? Absolutely not. That guy it's, sucks. Okay, well, yeah, well, it's a little guy? bit, it, it's a little bit like, Goldilocks and the three bears. It's like this yes. guy's too old, this guy's too sick, this guy's too Christian, you know? Like <laughs> <laughs> this... I, I, I loved that so much. <laughs> but uh. I mean, then Lady Ochiba kind of like walks in and it's like, uh oh, okay. Yeah. So and also too, like the whole thing is so brilliant as well because Toronaga has to know that they're not going to easily be able to decide on who's going to replace him yeah. because everybody wants exactly. someone who they can ally with to, you know, collect votes together with. So, it, well you know played. what it made me it what it made me think of was in I think it's Pirates of the Caribbean 3 when the Pirates Council was meeting and they were talking about how we can all have an election to vote for the pirate king. And, and they were all being like, it's so stupid. Everybody only ever votes for themselves. And they go around the table. Everybody's <laughs> voting for themselves. And then Captain Jack is like, and I vote for Elizabeth Swan. What? Yeah, weird, right? And it just, oh, my God. And that's how that scene felt to me because it was like, we got to find a replacement now. No problem. We'll just replace Toranaga. <laughs> oh, yeah. wait. We're not actually friends. We were just united against Toranaga and we agree on literally nothing, nothing. else. Yes. The political stalemate is still in play. Yep. I love it. I love it. It's, Brilliant. It's so much fun Brilliant. to watch, like, how even with Toranaga away and not even like at the table anymore, yeah. he's still able <laughs> to manipulate these guys. Good Lord. It, it's just brilliant. It's, it's just absolutely brilliant. I love it so much. So we then go back to this whole segment between Buntaro and these, <laughs> I guess, marital <laughs> issues between... <laughs> Him and Mariko, he was, you know, thought to be dead. Hooray, he's alive. But Mariko obviously doesn't seem too thrilled about it. Uh -huh. And we learn about her disgraced family background. This and was this was also traumatic. Like this, dude. Like I, I was happy. Like. Happy Buntara wasn't dead, but like the second that he showed up, I was like, this is going to be awful. Right. And I couldn't have guessed how bad it was going to be. What, I mean, what was Toranaga thinking sending him? Because because <laughs> as we've discussed this entire time, Toranaga is a man with a plan. 
So there is right? something he is expecting of this arrangement. Mm. Like he, he can't he has to, right? There has to be an objective here. You I would think, but like like running through the options, I'm not quite sure because on one hand, I could see him thinking like, okay, we've had a lot of assassination attempts on Blackthorn. Maybe we need to like move some people into his household to make hmm. this like kind of like a base of operations, make sure that it's well protected, make sure that it's befitting for a Hati Hatamoto like him, yeah. like more position, more people. I can see that. And, but, and uh, Fuji is his niece. Mm -hmm. So he's living with family. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Like maybe it just seemed like the natural thing because Mariko is already translating and it would be weird to like have her husband stay somewhere else than with his wife. Yeah. And maybe he's expecting Mariko to kind of spy on Blackthorn. Like he, she's taking notes of everything that he says. So, I mean, even if she's not spying to be a spy, she's still spying on him, yeah. like getting all the intel on him. So I guess it would make sense to have Buntaro go there rather than move Mariko out of the household. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. Maybe, maybe in this particular case, just as you're saying, it just it just makes sense. It's just one of those things that makes sense. This yeah. is what we need. This this works out the best. And Mariko genuinely seems to be one of the few people who can hide things from Tornaga, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And and I don't even think she does it intentionally. I think she is someone who she's just you know, naturally she, guarded, you know. At one point, yeah, at one point in time she even talks about the eightfold fence, you know, she tells Blackthorn, I beg you to remember the eightfold fence, like I'm hiding a lot right now. Yeah. And uh I feel like that's one of those things that she does so well that even Toranaga's like Cool. I don't know what's what motivates you, but I do know that you're loyal and I'll accept that. I'll take that. That's fine. And so I feel like that's one of those interesting sort of dynamics there. So maybe he didn't pick up on it until, you know, later in the episode. But interesting. Interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens because even at the dinner, um, again, you know, poor Blackthorn presents the <laughs> pigeon <Sorry>. stew. <laughs> I mean, he was so excited about it too. He was That was so, so hard to watch. It. Like I felt so bad for the guy. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I mean, it, uh, I don't know. Like I've I've been places and eaten weird things before. Yeah. Like I'm pretty adventurous, so I probably yeah. would have given it a shot, you know? Sure. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> they were even really polite about it too. They're like, "Oh, we have very weak stomachs." <laughs> okay, let me take that back. If it smelled like it had turned, then I would have passed. Yeah. <laughs> like I got again, again. Um, I thought that the curing process back then, remove the feathers, remove the innards, rub it down in salt. And hang it to dry. Like that's that's what I assumed what was gonna happen, but it wasn't. When he was starts talking about I'm clean, I'm so good at cleaning pheasant, I was like, cool, then clean the pheasant. And he didn't. And I was like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe it maybe it all comes down to like a difference in weather. Like I don't know how different Ooh. the weather between where he's at in England versus like Japan, I know they're it's both, you know. It also depends on where they are in Japan. Because I'd be willing to bet that there are some climates in Japan that are quite similar to the right. UK. Like if it's real humid, humid, like a lot of moisture in the air, that's probably not as good. <laughs> but 
Yeah. So it's, it's just, it was a mess. <laughs> we have, we had this dinner. Most and, awkward dinner ever. Oh God. Uh, Toda <laughs> Buntaro is kind of being, he's being passive aggressive as hell. Right. Oh, totally. Like totally. you, you, one could even say that like, he's he being was, a weirdo. He was so passive aggressive that in in very like sort of Eastern Japanese fashion, he was like tap dancing on that line, right? I'm not going to be rude because this is your house and I am a guest in it. However, this house smells really bad. I'm sure it's nothing to do with you, but it stinks. Like he was just real passive about it, passive aggressive about it. And Blackthorn picks up on it eventually. Because at the beginning, he was just all excited to be like, oh, yeah, welcome to my home. Let's right. have a great dinner. I prepared something special for us. That's what <laughs> that's what like got me so upset. Because Blackthorn was like a little kid, like so happy to share something. And Buntaro is just like being a dick. Yeah. <laughs> and when uh, the 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 slurping the noodles and he was like you know he's like oh why does he eat his noodles like that like a little monkey and <laughs> and blackthorn's like what are you talking about and mariko is like look you know when you slurp your noodles it's giving sort of a an appreciation for the flavor you know it's it's an illustration of of your appreciation and enjoyment of the dish mm -hmm. and in that moment Buntaro sort of capitalizes the statement by like, like just right. making the most obnoxious slurp ever. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Didn't know that. Been here, you know, almost a year now. I mean, it, suck. it totally like devolves into a on <laughs> a measuring contest. <laughs> yeah. and I, I loved when he did the sake. They were going and they're drinking out their little sake cups. And he's like, okay, big boy, you want to play? Let's play. We don't drink out of these. Wee. And then he like starts <laughs> filling up a tankard of sake, which oh, uh, I love sake, but oh, that would be, oh, that'd be so much. That's so much. Too much, too much. I wanted to ask you about Mariko's uh, explanation of her family line and everything like that were you shocked <sighs> yes um i was it i i need to go back and watch it again because i i know you know she gave her explanation but i missed the part where she was like sort of living in shame a little bit because my understanding was is that when that happened with her family that's how they reclaimed their honor which was by you know dying and yeah. it, the only thing i could pick up on it was that she was not allowed to die with her family because her husband would not let her correct yeah and he was behaving in a manner that was very commensurate with the behavior that he did not like her that right he was sort of antagonizing her by not allowing her to die. Yeah, it was, I mean, okay. Yes. But also I had, I had to wonder if he's essentially, like you said, doing this just to like spite her or if he was actually doing it because he didn't want her to kill herself. So like, see, yeah, it, it, you, that's it the could gray go, area. Yeah, it could go both ways. And I mean, fair enough. I mean, he doesn't want her to kill herself. But like, as we've seen throughout this entire show, people are killing themselves left and right. It's the quote unquote honorable thing to do. Why all of a sudden is someone not allowed to do it? I mean, you know, the literal reason because she's essentially her husband's property and he said no but in her case like is he essentially torturing her by making her live out her shame yeah so 
I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm kind of over Buntaro to be honest, like the yeah. whole, the whole, uh, archery situation. That was just, that yeah. was brutal. That <laughs> was, was brutal. Um, stop vibrating. Gosh, sorry, my phone is going <laughs> it's off right fine. now. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. Uh, no. Um, you know, and of course, he has to like flex his samurai muscle. And back then, guns mm -hmm. were considered almost unclean. You know, it was almost like a cowardly thing to have. Um. So he does this demonstration where he shoots two arrows through the same hole mm -hmm. in the wall, which like, good, good on you, man. But also like close enough to Mariko's face that her hair is must by the, the yeah. wind of the arrow. I mean, the shot was beautiful. Like The, visual. the shot was absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Um, yes. But, you know, Blackthorn calls him out and is like, hey, maybe you should not be a jerk to your wife. Right. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, whatever. I can do that. My wife is my property. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. <sighs> yeah. It's, it's, so, it's so awkward. Like, thinking about this series in terms of, like, how the concept of honor can be weaponized, you know, like yes. it's very dark. And I think this show really capitalizes on giving the viewers like a dark insight into yeah. what could be almost taken as a culture that is so easily ro romanticized by Westerners. So yes. like there's a lot of people, you know, like current today, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of today, not like back then, but you think of Japan, <laughs> this you think like, oh, happy, you know, like anime, yeah. stuff like that. Um, and this show is being like, like, look, this is very dark. This is not something that is all, you know, happy and romantic. And it's like, ah, yes, the noble samurai. It's like, no, like they, there were some messed up things going on and that's kind of what they're presenting here which it's an interesting way to do it but it's also making yeah. things much more complicated for within the story which you know for the viewer that's nice having so many layers i i yeah i i really that was very nicely said you've Thank got you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just incredibly succinct and it's even uh mariko even so bontaro smacks mariko around a little bit which is horrid they're screaming they wake up blackthorn he comes in and and bontaro has left the house and blackthorn goes after him and mm -hmm. Buntaro turns around and is like, oh, I'm sorry, I have disturbed the peace of your house. And he's like, are you fucking high right now? Like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? Yeah. And, and the guy goes, oh, you know, the sake went to my head. And Blackthorn does something that I absolutely love. He's like, really? Really? You little baby? Sake? That's your excuse? Mm -hmm. The sake? That's your excuse? Like, calls him out in public. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with this interaction because that's not going to be left unaddressed. Right. And so, I mean, they were so loud, like in the middle of this village, you know, everybody was kind of like peeking out their doors, like, oh, yeah. what's going on? Oh, like, yeah. This isn't going to be something people forget, you know, you know, and like, Obviously, Blackthorn like gets attention everywhere he is, anyways. So it's gonna be quite the little circus in town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he goes back. You know, he he and Mariko. I guess Mariko leaves. She wants to be alone. He goes and tracks her down, and he's like, "This is like bullshit. This is not okay. You can't you can't deal with this." Um, Mariko, you know, they have this kind of exchange where it's, it's the three hearts 
sort of exchange mm -hmm. where she's basically like, okay, um, you know, yesterday he was dead. Today he's not. Right. Like, step off. You don't get to say what's going on right now. And, you know, she, she says something that I really, really love. Um, because he's like, you should hate him. He, you should be so angry right now. I don't understand why you're not. And she's like, look, my husband is someone who, you know, I will give nothing to. I will not give him anger. I will not give him fear. And I certainly will not give him my hatred. He gets nothing from me. This is something that so many people struggle with understanding. I love this, though, because how many times do we say, like, in, in, in relationships nowadays, even, you know, in the, in the West now, it's like, well, you know they care because they're really, really angry. Like, you don't hate someone that you didn't love at one point in time, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, and so for her to just kind of be like, all right, I, I have now demoted you in my life, in my heart in my mind, in my soul, I've demoted you to not worth my time. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where you are now. I, I refuse. I've done my duty as a wife. I've born you a son. I am now doing my job as a translator. And you know that I want to die to, to join my family and you won't let me. So you don't get anything from me. Nothing. Right. She's just, um, Okay, are you have you ever heard of the term gr the gray rock method? I have not. It's actually like a tactic that you would do to someone who's a narcissist. So like okay. someone that is like really feeding off of making you making your life miserable essentially, which you know, Buntaro is doing that to Mariko pretty right. pretty well. But it's like you're just completely icing someone out, no emotion. Like anything you say, that anything someone would say to like get under your skin, you would just be like, oh, okay, that's nice. Okay, all right. Yeah. Like show, giving them nothing to feed their, you know. Interesting. <laughs> giving that person no fuel, I guess. And she's, I don't know, like obviously I when this book was written, I don't think that this was like a... <laughs> common thing but that's essentially what she's doing she's giving Would him nothing to go on yeah. and it's really interesting hmm. how effective it is but in her case like it's just it would be different if she could actually get away from him right like if she could walk away from him it would be different but she can't like he she's still his property so no matter what she does like this is her best option i guess like she's not fanning the flames she's not really like doing anything she's right. just like i'm a rock like i'm a stone try well, whatever you want and in this particular case that kind of forces bontaro to own his own actions right mm -hmm. he can't he can't blame her right she didn't do yeah because she didn't do anything and we know that Bontaro is the kind of guy who will find an excuse because that's exactly what he did when he was confronted by Blackthorn. He yeah. straight up said, oh, yeah, sorry for disturbing your home. You know, sake. sake. <laughs> yep. Motherfucker, what? <laughs> you did not. You're a big, bad samurai warrior. There's no way that you fell prey to the, the liquor's and, and, and was taken by the liquor, like. Exactly. Well, I mean, and that's the thing too, like he's, tell, he's telling on himself essentially, mm -hmm. like, yeah, so it was the alcohol, but you know, the dude just has a temper, like that's yeah. all it is. He's not yeah. in contro control of himself, which frankly should be like weird for everyone considering like the whole honor and, you know, whatever, yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we should probably move on though a little bit. Yes. And get towards. Well, there's Weishiro. I think that happens next, doesn't it? Say that again. 
uh, Weishiro, the garden, the garden. Yes, that's what I. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going. Yep, that was ah. pretty rough. So more cultural misunderstandings, where Blackthorn points to the pheasant and says, uh, "You touch die," I believe. Yeah. Which everyone, I mean, like. For one, I am perplexed that no one pulled him aside and was like, are you sure about that? Because, right. I mean, he, you know, he, his his Japanese isn't that great. But he says this, the small village is uh, made this stinky pheasant a like village problem. So someone has to get rid of the pheasant. And because the gardener is old and sick, he decides to do it that way. Like he can get rid of it and not like, you know, a young, healthy person dies. Uh, so he sacrifices himself to get rid of the stinky pheasant. Which is also a very Japanese thing to do. This, this, this I don't know. This, this upset me so much. Like I was right? irate, irate. I rate it. Mm. I, so what struck me is when Blackthorn was coming back to his house mm -hmm. and all the villagers were weeping. Like you could see people in the streets crying and he's like, what is going on? And he walks into the house and everybody's standing there just terrified. And Fuji points over to the wall and is like, we took your pheasant down. And he's like, well, what the hell? Why are you so sad about that? And they were like, so Ujiro died. We killed him. Don't worry. He's dead. Um, but we had to take that damn bird down. Mm -hmm. And he, like, it's such a beautiful moment because at first he's not getting it. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you killed him? Mm -hmm. You killed him. You killed him. He is dead. What? Like, over a stinky, rotten bird. Right? And everybody, everyone is distraught about this. Like, everyone is sad about this. And Mariko has to explain to him, uh, you made the rule. If anybody touches the bird, they die. Well, Ushiro was old and sick, and he... For the betterment of the village, because the entire village is, you know, upset about this, he took it and sacrificed himself. For the bird. What? Those are your words. Yeah. You're the one who made the rule. And as the responsibility sinks into him, he, oh, it, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Because, because of course, in this episode, they had to go out of their way to show him having a friendship with Ushiro. Right. The, look, like <laughs> we'll get we'll get there. But I mean, that that segment where he like kind of gives homage to him by moving the rock, like setting the rock back up in the end. I was choked up. I was it was not it was not a happy place for me. <laughs> no, no, that was. That was sad. That was, was so sad. It was awful. But I mean, like, the reality is no one thought to question Blackthorn because of his position. No one thought to question his language, if that's what he really meant. Everyone just went along with it because his position is Hatemoto. I mean, he's in charge. Like... <sighs> That's yep. just how it goes. And I mean, I live somewhere where English is not my first language. I have said some things where people are like, huh? You know, <laughs> like, yep. I have never made that big of a mistake. <laughs> Hope to never <laughs> do something like that. But um, I can understand how a miscommunication can cause problems but that is like the most extreme situation that i think i've ever witnessed sure. <laughs> presented sure. in well, film <laughs> or tv and once again once again they made they made they, this has been a several episode lead up to this because when he meets ushiro 
he says, you know, oh, it's lovely to meet you, Ushiro Sama. Sama. And Ushiro's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Like, you immediately get a sense that, okay, he is beneath the, he is, he's beneath, he is yeah. lesser than. And, oh, God, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. Um, because Blackthorn's learning the about the caste system that they have and not realizing that the, you know, cause, cause sure back in London, a noble, a nobleman can, you know, put arrest someone and have them mm -hmm. put on trial, but there's a trial. There's a, you know, th this idea that, um, you know, don't do this or I'll kill you. Okay. Well, I, I have to do it. So go ahead and just kill me. Also weird that they didn't ask, Blackthorn, like, oh, like, are you gonna do the killing? Who's gonna do the killing? Yeah. I guess, like, they'll do it themselves. <laughs> like, all right, <laughs> easy peasy. I don't, <laughs> I don't even have to get my hands dirty. Right? What a what a waste! What a waste! Yeah. I never want to see a pheasant again. Yeah. <laughs> God, it hurts. And so he he is, uh just thrashed mm -hmm. and goes to Toranaga with Mariko. And again, we get a reminder that his crew is very suspiciously absent. And he says, I can't do this anymore. I wish to leave permanently. You guys suck. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never met people who cared so little about I life. I get it though. I mean, if it, if it were me, to be completely honest, I would want out of there so fast. Like, it, I I can't even I can't even say anything. Like, oh, I would have been so upset. I understand why Blackthorn is just like, what yeah. the hell? Like, what what the hell? But also, you know, the the position. Yeah. that he is that he is above everyone no one gets to ask you know is that what you really meant <sighs> yeah it's 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 harsh it's harsh um when he's talking to Toranaga though I know well going back to his heart to heart with Mariko and she basically says the only words we're going to speak towards each other are through other people basically saying this is done and you and I, I'm going to go back to doing my job, which is translating. They get to Toranaga. They're having the conversation going back and forth. And Toranaga is like, there's a shadow over you two. What happened? He, he instantly picks up that there's a tension there because he's a smart guy. And what is it? He like, I can't remember his response. Oh, his response was he didn't even respond. He was just like, I don't have time for this nonsense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it gets up to go because he doesn't have time for this nonsense. And it's time to go check out over his military. His military that he's got perfectly positioned. Because as he discussed earlier in the episode, he's like, yeah, now they're going to come to us. Like laying siege to the castle would have been costly it would have taken time. It would have cost a bunch of lives. Now we can position ourselves perfectly and just wait for them to come to us. I mean, it, it worked out perfectly then, right? Like, yeah, he's what mad could at possibly his son. Go wrong? Yeah, he's mad at his son. <laughs> but and then the all the little earthquakes, all the little tremors, finally catch up. Catch up explode and the entire army is swallowed just tossed like tossed like, <laughs> done just swank bleh, done we don't like you this okay so this whole segment really enjoyable because you know like of course it, it's as awful as it is, it's a bit of a palate cleanser. Like, you know, like put the pheasant in the past. We've got yeah. a new problem to deal with. So like yeah. as a viewer, I'm kind of like, okay, good thing. Like that's, that's <laughs> over. Yeah. But <laughs> now there's a new problem and well, this is. And... Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. 
No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry. Just my thoughts are keep bubbling up. And I'm like, no, I love that you called it a palate cleanser because that was immediately what my thought was, was, oh, well, that's convenient because now he's going to have a reason to stay again, you know, um, because now he doesn't have a, a regiment of, of cannoneers trained up. So his bargain is not met. <laughs> and despite what he had, despite how he feels, I feel like he does have at least a respect for Toranaga. Um, if at minimum he has a sort of a loyalty by necessity, I would say mm -hmm. he knows that any hope of him getting back home with his men and his ship was going to be at the behest of Toranaga. Yeah. And I think too, there's still, you know, a lot of questions out there where it's like, okay, the people he were he was training, if they're all gone, can he get his crewmates to, you know, do something? Are they still alive? Like there's still that dark cloud of a question mark hanging over that whole plot. Like we don't know what's gonna happen there. We also don't know if with the remaining people, we don't know how how many are going to be like Yabushiga loyalists, how many are going to be Omi loyalists, how many are going to be Toranaga's men. Like we don't know what the ratios yeah. are now. So this could potentially cause problems with, you know, who's who's available and who's still yeah. like politicking, who's going to screw who's well, over. And not only that, but think about it like this. I mean, this is a very ancient time, right? It's the 1500s. Um, that's an act of God. Right. Like very <laughs> few people are going to look at that and not immediately see that as the gods looking at them and going, your cause is not just. That's true. That's true. So that could... That could I'll be interested to see how that plays into what's happening too. Right. I mean, they could just blame it on the pigeon. <laughs> it was that stinky pigeon. Oh, they <laughs> probably <my> will. <laughs> they probably will. Well, because what they were saying is that the the dead carcass, they were uh someone was saying, oh, one of the villagers was complaining that there was a something which was which was basically like a like a, a spirit like a demon spirit okay kind of yeah thing yeah that was haunting and how are Your people face. not going to put that connection i mean oh. it's it's possible it's possible i okay the next thing i want to talk about before we get going too long here I do want to say that when Toranaga is like swallowed up into the yeah. earth, I loved that Blackthorn was like the hand that like pulls him out, you know? And on top of that, Toranaga loses his swords, but then Blackthorn presents Fujisama's swords. So now, like, what a great honor to my girl Fuji. Like, yes. So happy. I thought that same so thing. Happy. I was like, <laughs> well, and especially now that he knows the, the true story behind those swords. Mm -hmm. And Mariko knows the true story. And I'm sure Toranaga knows the true story. But I feel like Toranaga is the type of guy where, He's like, going to be very honored. Right? <laughs> well, if, okay, look, do you think, despite Tornaga knowing that they're not, you know, they're not really worth anything, do you think he'll still carry them because it's honorable, like, because they were presented by the man that just, like, saved him from dying, that pulled him out of the ground, like, the hand of God, like, do you think that he's going to, like, do 
Blackthorn the honor of carrying them? Or do you think he'll just kind of be like, thanks, but not thanks? Oh, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to make the prediction that he is going to carry those swords. Okay. Because... I, I, I agree just because I want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel like I feel like there's a an element there of 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 almost almost like an honor bound kind of necessity kind of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where this man saved my life. He has presented me these swords that are not great, um, but he saved my life and gave me swords, and I can still use them. And now that the earth basically just stole my swords, I need some swords. <laughs> right? And I mean, so, too, like, I wonder if there's also, like, talking about superstition and everything, I wonder if it would be, like, bad juju to not accept the swords, considering yeah. the situation that happened, like... Blackthorn found him. Blackthorn pulled him out. Like yep. that has to count for something. <laughs> that to... <sighs> Again, it's it's going to be. You know, the other thing I keep thinking of is, is this going to be an eight episode series situation? I don't know if it's eight or ten. Because here's the deal. We're on episode five. We just finished episode five, and so far. There have been no military campaigns at all. And I I find it difficult to believe that they're going to change the tone of the show in the last several episodes to be like, okay, yeah, no, we had all this intrigue. Now it's just going to be nothing but battles. Yeah. I, I do think there's going to be some freaking phenomenal battles. Oh, same, same. Like... They've already shown they know how to do it, and it's going to be insane, and I can't wait. But yeah. I'm interested for the pacing of how they're going to work that in. I'm looking up, Shogun, how many episodes? Ten. I'm surprised they didn't go with eight, though, just because it's like a lucky number. Or it's something. the popular thing to do nowadays. Right? Dude, I... <sighs> I, I, I hate it. I hate the episode. The I eight hate episode. eight. I hate eight. <laughs> Hashtag I hate eight. The eight episode format is killing storytelling. The eight right. episode curse. I hate uh, it so much. It is, yeah, you can't. Okay. You depending on what you're covering, it is really, really difficult to cover a book in eight <sighs> episodes. I'm not a fan, but uh. It, if if it were an eight episode situation in which I said I have a story and I can do it in eight episodes and the production company went cool let's do it in eight episodes great but that's not what's happening what's happening is is they've said hey we can do it we're going to set up an eight episode format mm -hmm. where if you can bring us an adaptation or whatever in eight episodes then we'll go ahead and do it um, because there's there's something about eight episodes being, you know, we don't have to pay you as much, blah, blah, blah. That too. And I think it's a, like an attention span thing for people yeah. that like, for like TV viewers that are also phone scrollers, you know what I mean? Like eight is like enough to where like you're getting all the big plot beats, but you're pretty much just going from one to the next with not a lot of connective tissue between yeah. them. And just I, not a fan. people have people are great. People are amazing, and they found ways of putting some creative call-ins and tiebacks and storytelling techniques. But all in all, this this eight episode format is it's so. It, if it weren't a a standardized format for television storytelling, I wouldn't hate it as much. But where they've made it a standard format, and you either give us eight episodes or you don't make a show. That's just I I it's don't so dumb. It's I don't dumb. understand it. It's yeah, it's it's really not great for like the artistry of storytelling, and. I mean the the metrics. I like how we've derailed here, and I don't care. 
I, I don't like how the metric <laughs> for streaming is all about like retention and oh, yeah. like people that finish the whole series. Like there have been so many shows that have been canceled because the numbers don't line up with exactly what they want, even when the numbers aren't bad considering how many people tuned in. Like it's just... It's not cool. I, I mean, it makes me miss like syndicated television where it's like, all right, you yeah. got 13 episodes. All right, like 20 episodes. And I'm not saying that every show needs 20 episodes. That's unhinged. I Sure. But <laughs> like, <laughs> again, it's the standardization of the format. It's exactly. unnecessary, exactly. especially with streaming platforms. Mm hmm. Like they, they want us to believe that we've gone away from which a lot of a lot of you a lot of you youngins <laughs> a lot of you nowadays <laughs> don't know TV used to just be on TV and if you didn't log in log in if you didn't turn <laughs> on your TV at seven thirty to watch your episode you didn't see it. Yep, you couldn't go. There back was and no watch it. recording <laughs> it to come back later. There was no, uh, there was nothing. There was no renting it at a store or streaming it on a platform. It was straight up. Hi, guess what? New episode is tonight at seven thirty. Be there or miss it. Right. And if you miss it, you have to wait for several years for a rerun. Right, and then TiVo came around where you could actually record on and, your tv now you can record on the tv but you still had to wait for it to come around to get it and if you forgot to set the record you guess screwed. what <laughs> you didn't get it so you're telling me that at that point in time having a a a, a format a standardized episode format didn't make sense as much as it does now where I've got Netflix and I've got Hulu and I've got Crunchyroll and Amazon and whatever else out there. And I can just sit down and watch 800 episodes if I want to. The only time limitation you should have is the age of your actors. I mean, this, okay, like this is another thing like that has me worried for the Wheel of Time because if they're doing... Yes. See, we're really derailing here. Again, don't care. <laughs> Going for it. Going with it. You know what? If, if they Tangents. Get... <laughs> Tangents. Yes. That's what we're all about, baby. So for certain shows, speaking about the Wheel of Time right now, if they get the eight seasons that they want, but they're doing a new season every other year, Math yep. says that your actors are going to be like in their 30s <laughs> by the time the series ends. And I mean, it's another thing having to do with standardizing things where it's like eight episodes, but only eight episodes every other year. And it's like, why are we? Why? <laughs> but why? <laughs> Is it the budget? Is it them trying to spread their money longer yeah. like it's it's a lot of things and it makes me sad but you know what doesn't make me sad <laughs> what doesn't make you sad ever shogun having again. 10 episodes 10 yes! episodes so, so yeah excited. we've got we've got a lot more so this is halfway on. through yes we're at the halfway point oh no this is going to be interesting any this series, is be any predictions? I'm, okay, okay. I've got like a an oddball one. Like, all right, throw it out. Far left field. I could see the possibility of Black Thorn's crew being dead, him finding out, and him causing big problems for Toranaga in terms of like, you know, like I'm gonna boycott showing anybody else right, how to right. work these things. Um, something like that could happen. We could also spend quite a bit more time 
back with the Council of Regents with, you know, them trying to yes. hammer things out, which could also leave a leave a plot point open to where like the new regent that they try and get in might not be as reliable as they think they could get right. someone who might actually back Toranaga like a plant or they could get somebody who actually is Toranaga's you know like main adversary where like we thought the council was bad Ooh. but they bring someone in who's even more of a schemer maybe like lady ochiba i think that was the name they could bring someone in who's even more of a schemer than toranaga and then we get into like some real you know checker chess playing i like that i like that theory here's my theory going forward okay right? tell me which is going to be different. Um, I'm thinking that Toranaga is, you know, realistically, he's going to have to rethink his entire plan. Mm -hmm. I think the cannons are going to provide him with a much better advantage than he originally thought. And they're going to utilize that in a kind of guerrilla warfare tactic Ooh. to bleed the enemy dry so that the small force that he is now able to, to muster, the small reserve force that he is able to muster, is going to be sufficient for what's left. So he's gonna, but he's gonna have to like make it look like his numbers are a lot more than. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'm I'm building on this now, but we could also have something essentially like a SEAL Team 6 moment where Diversion is hammering the shit out of the castle with cannons yeah. and then sending, you know, a small force in to kill the people who need to be killed. I could definitely see Buntaro being on that squad for some yeah. reason. But, oh, um, did he survive the Earth's quake oh that's another okay that's another uh <laughs> that did, that could be did the cannons survive <laughs> oh snap look i feel like the cannons have oh to survive otherwise we've got so many questions right now and no answers yeah if the cannons are gone then i feel like blackthorn can be free to go like he can't provide anything <laughs> can he oh I, well, I mean, I guess there's guns, yeah, but I don't know, man. Oof. All right. Should we wrap it up there? Let's wrap it up there because I feel like we can just start bringing up all the questions. <laughs> Theorizing. Yeah. If you've got any theories, let us know. If you know what's going to happen, don't let us know. <laughs> yeah. If you've Oof. read the books and you know how the story ends, please don't spoil us. But if you've uh, got some fun tangents that you feel like sharing with us in the comment section, go ahead and do that. We will be back next week on Josh's channel. So make sure you are subscribed over there to get the next episode and we will see you then.